hello there it is november 2nd and i am driving down to rapid city south dakota it's a pretty scuzzy day right now it's like rainy gross but it's not snowing so i prefer it um, i'm probably going to check the weather and make sure that i uh, that it won't get icy so <laughs> i have this i found a <laughs> my voice sounds all weird because i found this like massage pad at a thrift store and it plugs into the cigarette lighter and I get a lot of cramps around my shoulder blades and I'm driving these long distances so <laughs> it's, when it's buzzing it makes my voice sound like a robot but it's really nice because yeah it just keeps my back from getting too uh, tight and kind of spasmed on the way so yeah I mean I've only I like think I didn't get there till Wednesday and I'm leaving on Friday but it already feels like I've been there for so long and uh, yeah, so I'm going to work on another project that I have going on, which is based in South Dakota. So I'm going down to meet some people that are involved with that. And uh, it's like a six hour drive, but I had a freak out moment because um, the reservation that I'm living on, my phone will just like stop working. Like it just will say full bars and 4G, but it won't work. It'll just like nothing will open. So I like hit the road and then I was like, oh my God, wait, I don't know how to get to Rapid City. There's no clear highways. And then I was like, oh, well, I'll use my fancy, you know, car because it's the newest car I've ever had. It's still over a decade old, but it has this uh, map. But because my car had died the other day, the battery was broken. The map was closed. It was sealed. With a, you needed a code. So all of a sudden I was like on the road and I had no GPS available so that was challenging and I was like oh my gosh am I not supposed to go I don't know but then I figured it out I opened the book and there's a little card in there that had the code but then my GPS was like these are unverifiable roads please exercise caution on these roads and I was like okay then I turned my phone off and on a couple times and then I started working so I do at least have consistent GPS uh, and two forms now to check against each other to get down there but I thought it was a six hour drive, and it is to the city, but then where I'm actually meeting on the, the, another reservation is about two more hours after that. So that means Sunday I'll have to do about eight hours, which, you know, it's doable as long as my car is working. I do have the check engine light on right now, unfortunately. Uh, it's been on for a few days, so if I have time tomorrow after these meetings, I could go to a mechanic but then again maybe I should push a different meeting to Sundays because now there's nowhere's gonna be open to look at it or I just kind of hang tight and hope that the car keeps working and uh, I, there is a little Napa auto parts place in a nearby town to me so I might be able to go during the week but yeah so I've I've been trying to figure out the logistics and the paperwork part of you know this job but in the meantime I've just been getting to know the kids and the school and you know continuing to meet with people and hear their stories and one thing that's definitely consistent is that a lot of the teenagers are not going to sleep until like 3 in the morning or they're going to sleep at like 7 p.m. until 2 a.m. and then they're up so I'm wondering if any herbalists or people out there that may have struggled with insomnia themselves have natural remedies I know these things like valerian root tea and chamomile are supposed to help. I don't have that right now available to share with them, so it'd be nice if someone could maybe contribute that. But there've got to be other methods. Like I taught them, you know, about deep breathing, about getting sun in their eyes in the morning and getting off of devices and not having fluorescent lights on. But there's got to be more options because of course, a student is not going to be able to pay attention to school, is not going to be able to deal with a lot of frustration if they are running on four hours of sleep and so that just complicates everything of course they're not gonna be able to focus and study and learn their material if they're existing like that so that seems to be a pretty baseline sort of foundational uh, issue that makes everything else more complicated I know that when I'm on four hours of sleep or less everything is more complicated and difficult but so far it's been great I, I love working with these kids and so far I haven't worked with the really little ones I'm a little nervous about that my first job out of school was working with uh, all five-year-olds and I already knew that it wasn't like my forte but it was the job that I got and so I went with it and after about six months I was 
this little kid like spit on the floor and I was like playing dollhouse and I was just like I did not get my master's degree to be dealing with this so shout out to all the children's therapists out there but I really do like working with the preteens and the teens like I'm fine working with the kids you know playing with them but it's just different I like when I'm able to talk to them and so you know and as I said before a lot of these kids grow up really fast and so they are exposed to a lot and I've seen a lot more than you know 12 year olds in a different place so I'm very real with them and I think they appreciate that and that I'm like young and of indigenous descent myself because the only other therapist they have had available like long term was a much older white man who's great he's like wonderful but you know just a little different to relate to them and uh, so it's interesting though because right now you know I'm hearing some of their backstories as I'm getting the referrals but then the kids are like, oh no, everything's great, everything's fine, no problem. <laughs> so I figure once we get a little more rapport and more of a relationship going, then they'll be more open to sharing what's really going on with them. And you know, it takes time to build trust and uh, know what they can tell me without sort of getting in trouble. And I just always tell them the limit is, you know, if someone is in danger of hurting themselves or others and has a plan to take action on that, then I do have to tell someone. But short of that, you know, we can we can talk about whatever and I like having that role. So another thing that's been going on that I wanted to speak about is exploitation and appropriation of people. So there's several instances that have just put this theme in my mind of like from everything from stealing to lying to basically using other people and taking advantage, especially of someone's kindness or someone's pain and vulnerability, and then using that to boost someone's ego or their wallet. And, you know, it's just really disappointing. Like I had met someone last year who I really trusted. He was like a really, you know, presented as a very good person, was corroborated by people who've known him for a long time. And yet uh, he stole something extremely valuable I mean, not emotionally, but financially, it was just something that I yeah, had no mile. idea that... In a quarter mile, turn right onto Lincoln Avenue, 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 Northwest. And, okay, hold on. I'm going to... i got to not get lost, but... Yeah, and then this other thing happened where online, like, someone was going through something, and then another person just, like... Like, objectified... Turn right onto Lincoln Avenue. Like, you know how sometimes you'll be in a traffic jam and you're like, oh, I wonder what's going on. And then you'll realize that actually it was a accident, but it wasn't that the, the traffic was slowing down because like the road was... Continue on Lincoln Avenue Northwest for three quarters of a mile. But because people were like slowing down to look, you know? And it's like this weird thing of human nature that I've observed in many times. It's like you want to look, but you don't, but you do, but you don't. Or like you see something really terrifying and gross and then you kind of want to like look at it one more time. And I imagine that it comes from some kind of biological need to see how other people have been hurt so that we don't get hurt in that way. But it shows up really awkwardly, especially with things like social media um, today. Because someone in the community was hurt and shared about it on the media and then all these people were sharing about it and like just reposting the details the the, the traumatic upsetting traumatizing un, like scary painful details and I was just like why is it that everyone just feels this desire like it's like I don't know whatever let's use a silly example like I stub my toe and then everyone is like lolly stubbed your toe lolly stubbed your toe lolly stubbed your toe in a quarter mile but turn not, right to South Central me. Avenue with my toe they're not they weren't there with me when I stubbed my toe it's just like this weird perverse kind of almost violence porn where it's like objectifying someone else's suffering and then spreading it around with no intention of helping or like even a reason that it's that person to share it turn right onto South so, Central Avenue Lewis mm -hmm. and Clark Trail right oh my gosh you can hear both my GPS is telling me at least they're consistent so that's a good sign because I am in a tiny town here but there's so many, like even smaller towns and a lot of areas where there's literally nothing for a long time. So I gotta stay up on my gas, I got half a tank going well. So yeah, I just wanted to speak to that because it just really bothers me. Like, in a quarter mile, turn left. Advantage of someone's, street southeast. Like, yeah. I mean, and of course you're like, well, what are they getting out of that? That's the question. When I look at it, like what's someone intention of doing that? 
And what I was observing is it's almost like I saw it at Standing Rock happen. It's like this, I don't know. People, like for example, someone that turn left onto 14th Street Southeast, then turn right onto County Road 350. Then their post got shared out like 500 times. And so that sent that, like according to the algorithms on Facebook, that, that it has a positive impact for that person. They're going to get more viewership. They're going to get more people seeing it. But also they're going to appear to be connected to the person that was hurt when it was totally not their place to do that. You know, it's like, I remember like my friend growing up, she used to always be like, oh my gosh, do you know what terrible thing happened to some random person that you don't know? Let me tell you all about it. And I would always be like, well, you should work in the news because what does it matter that like your friend's cousin's sister's boyfriend cheated on her? Like, Head southwest I, on Montana 16. No, I'm not. That 200 is west not relevant to my life in any way. Continue on Montana 16 south for one and a half miles. And so, yeah, I just wanted to address that because it's really bothering me and I seem to be like particularly upset by it and other people are kind of like, meh. But I just wanted to vent about that a little bit and then just like taking advantage of people and exploiting people and lying. It's like, if you're going to be a jerk, then be a jerk. If you're going to be a con, then be a con. But I mean, of course, like a good con artist appears trustworthy. That's the whole thing about them. But I just hate feeling like, you know, played. Like you pulled a fast one on me, you know, like I opened my heart. I trusted you with something that I thought would help you. And then you literally steal it from me and lie about the kind of person that you are. And now it's gone. And there's nothing I can do to get it back because of the bureaucracy that we live in. So it is what it is, you know? I mean, luckily I can like survive without this thing that was taken, but I just feel really used and hurt. And I really do want to express myself to that person someday and like sit down and or just, you know, even on the phone, just be like, why did you do that? Like, how, do you, how are you okay with having treated me like that? And the In a quarter mile, turn left to Montana, Montana 23 East. So, all right, well, this GPS is annoying me. I might edit this video down. All right, ciao.